Perspective Power Appers. In this video, you are going to talk about the four different types of apps you can build in Power Apps and when does it make sense to use each of those styles of applications. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. You've been assigned an application that your business wants to build and they, they chose to build it through Power Apps. Well, there are four types of applications you can build in Power Apps, and the decision largely rests in three different factors. Licensing, where is my data source, and who is my user? So in this video, we're gonna discuss and explore each of those types. We have a quick two slides, and then we're gonna jump, to jump into demos that will show you which, sty which style make makes sense for your organization. So let's begin with the most common example, Canvas applications. Canvas applications are what most people think of when they think of Power Apps. They can connect to a thousand different data sources, actually way more than a thousand at this point, and they're adding more data sources all the time. One of those data sources is Dataverse, and we'll discuss what Dataverse is in a moment. Now, for Canvas applications, it is best used for users that are, um, that are maybe less technically savvy. savvy. When I say users, I don't mean you, I mean your, your customer, your internal customers that you might have. So in, for, for these kind of applications, you're going to want to build an application that has bumpers up in bowling, right? Where they can only do so many things and not hurt themselves in the application. The other kind of application, every other application from this point forward requires Dataverse. And Dataverse is a database that Microsoft provides that's going to make it easy for you to build this database. It's going to resemble uh, SharePoint, but it is a proper SQL Server database behind the scenes. None of that matters, but ultimately Matt, what matters for you is it's going to be easy for you to build out this database with minimal help from development or DBAs. Microsoft has provided you all the tools for this Dataverse database to build out tables, to store your data, to audit and do security with that database. So now that we know what Dataverse is, model-driven applications next. Model-driven applications allow you to build applications much faster with zero code or maybe some, some JavaScript or C-sharp code if you want to have some very complex relationships inside there. And even PowerFX can be used there. But largely, you're not going to need a lot of code for a model-driven application. It is a rigid type of application where you pretty much have list and forms in there. And you can't really control much about how it looks from a list and forms. Yes, you can install third-party components to make it look prettier, but largely, it is what it is. It's going to resemble something like Dynamics or Salesforce.com if you've seen that. So list of data and forms to enter, edit, and delete that data. Model-driven apps do require Dataverse, and they're best used for back office teams that are used to seeing this kind of data. So that want to have the bumpers down when it comes to bumper bowling. They're gonna to want to be able to interface with Excel a lot more. So if your users love them some Excel, data um, model-driven applications are the best option for you. I typically find these are best for admin teams like uh, accounting, project management, and finance. I mentioned accounting twice there, but finance, uh, HR, any kind of project management team, people that, that don't mind that they have a little more freedom in the application. The next kind of application, I'm gonna start right to left here, is a Power Page. It was called Power Apps Portals, now it's called Power Page. Now Power Pages allows you to take the application you built and extend it outside of an internal organization. So in other words, you want to have your patients interact with it. Maybe parents interact with it at school or vendors interact with this data. So this is best used for outside parties or where you don't want to have to go through and license every individual naming every individual. So let's take, for example, a school. Let's imagine you operate a school that has 60,000 students and you're building an application for a housing change of request form or maybe a change of major request form, something that students might use every two or three years maybe per student. So why go and license all 60,000 students for Power Apps? Instead, you can license a Power Page and you can say, hey, I'm expecting 200 students to come in each month. You don't have to name the students, you're just licensing those 200 people to log in each month and interact with their data. 
So that's where Power Pages makes sense. It's best used for outside resources that want to interact with this data. The final one is Power Apps for Teams. Now, most of the things we've discussed so far, let's go back one step here. Canvas applications can be free or they can be paid, uh, they can be free, I say free, they can be free with your Office subscription or they can be paid if you use a premium connection. Things like Salesforce.com, SQL Server and Oracle, and Dataverse are all considered premium connections. Things like, uh, sell, uh, things like Excel and SharePoint are considered free connections. However, if I flip over here, Power Apps for Teams is a free application. Portals is paid, and uh, Model Different Apps, because it uses Dataverse, is paid also. But Power Apps for Teams is included in your Teams license or your Office 365 license that you have today. It allows you to build a Canvas app and you can have up to two gigs of data per team and up to a million records in a table. So that's the pro and con of, of Power Apps for Teams. The pro is it's free and it performs better than what SharePoint can perform because it's using Dataverse behind the scenes. The con is it's using Power Apps for Teams, so we have to go through Teams to get to your application. That's also a pro for some people. Some people want to stay in Teams all day long and access their applications through Teams. So let's jump into the three types of applications. There's four. We're going to skip Power Apps for Teams here. Uh, it's, it's a better alternative. Power Apps for Teams is a better alternative than putting your data in SharePoint, ultimately. It's more secure, more performant, and it's still included in your license today. So we're gonna focus on three apps other than that one. We'll, we'll start with a story of a doctor's office. And I built an application really quickly here in just a couple hours. This application is gonna walk us through a, a appointment that you have with a doctor. You first wanna sign into the doctor's website and register as a patient, uh, put all your demographic information in and all those kind of things securely. After you do that, we also need to have a experience that if you happen to forget to do that, you go to the office and you enter in the information that way in the office through a tablet. And then lastly, we need a doctor experience, the back office experience, where the, the nurses, the uh, doctor, the back office, the insurance team can all go through and see these records as well. So that's the app we're gonna show now. So let's start by going back over to our applications and I'll open up this doctor experience. Again, this is only built in a couple hours. It's not very pretty. But I wanted to just kind of show you the experience of functionality more importantly here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my patients. And as a lot of US doctors have, they'll have a new patient form on their website, at least the ones that have uh, an, a, a electronic medical systems. When I click on that, one of my pet peeves is having to go to the doctor's office and fill the paperwork in over and over and over again. So in this case, when I click on this, this, uh, this piece here, it's the first time I spun this up in about a day here. So it's going to spin for a few seconds while the first patient comes in for the week. Uh, you'll notice I have about 10 different providers I can use. Facebook, Azure, LinkedIn, Google, Microsoft, all sorts of providers. So I'm going to go just do Azure AD because I know I have an account there. But as a patient, I would have hit register up top and register as a new patient, put my core information like my name, my phone number, and all those kind of things in there. But since I'm internal already, I'll use Azure AD, which would be perfect for things like students and, and whatnot. Now that I do that, you'll see my information. It also allows for multiple languages and the such. But I'm going to go back to patients, back to my new patient form, and I'll work through my new patient form by just showing you a basic Power App. All right, we'll see my information up top, all those kind of goodies. I can go through and say, you know, how tall am I? I'll, I'll make myself crazy tall right now, nine foot two inches. And there we go. And when I hit next, we're gonna see that, that, uh, that number transposed to all the other applications. I can also change, uh, if I get back here, let me make one last change here to my uh, address, just so we can see that later. I'll call this, uh, there we go, box or whatever and I'll hit next. Just so you can see that in the other applications in a moment. We get a little wizard that comes up here where we can kind of go through and hit next, next, next. We also can go through and say, hey, I am a female. Oh, not that, uh, female. And it'll, it will show and hide fields based on that. And then same thing with smokers and alcohol and all those kind of things as well. We also have the ability to upload things like insurance cards if I wanted to. I can put my insurance information in here and I can actually upload the card if I wanted to as well. And then same thing for things like my, um, you know, 
if history, all this is fake data, of course. But if I add a, a family member, I can go through and add that and medications as well. So if I go to medications, of course, this is, this is all fake. I'll hit the piece here. I'll see a list of all the medications. Check one of those, hit select, save my dosage twice daily, and hit submit. So all of this all integrates very easily into the Dataverse database. And I can keep on hitting next, next, next to go through this. But you get the idea. That's where Power Pages comes in. It's a client facing, external client facing. It can be used by internally as well, but this is a externally facing in this case. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to kind of limit your licenses, you could use this for without having to go and name every worker at your office for internal purposes also. But largely externally focused focuses the goal of this. So now that we have that. I go to the doctor's office, I forgot to, to fill in the information, update my insurance information or whatever. So the next kind of app style is going to be a Canvas application. In this, you'll notice I'm designing this application through a little web interface where I can drag and drop things, see all my screens and the like. And we have lots of videos on how to do these. But when I play this application, I can put my employee PIN number in here, hit login, and then we're off to the race. Now I can select Brian Knight, uh, hit my next screen and you can kind of get a preview of what this is going to look like as a tablet uh, for my end users. So, I'm, so I went to the doctor's office, they handed me this tablet or I went to a kiosk and when they, when they, they, the nurse looked me up, they hit next and now they handed me this tablet. And I can, of course, you know, look at different views here. I can try to say, well, let's just look on, on, a, on more of a PC device also. But there we go. I'm looking at the information. I have my tabs, the same tabs you saw before, just in a different type of view. And you can see as I go through this, I can update different values. I haven't refreshed my data set, but if I were to leave this and come into this uh, new and refresh my data set, you're going to watch things like uh, 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 different values here change. For example, my Green Coast Springs becomes a new value there also. So every time I, I open up this, it would essentially refresh that anyway. So I would always see the, the data that from the patient portal there as well. All right, so that is a Canvas application. What's brilliant about these applications is you'll notice I only have two things I can do. I can cancel this and say, all right, give this back to the nurse at this point. I can hit the next and finish up this process. Uh, so, and this was built very quickly also. I built this in less than an hour also. Okay, when I use Dataverse, all these systems are all interconnected now also, which takes us to our last style of application. Our last style of application is going to be the model German app for today. Now, the model German app, as you can see, if I were to select Brian Knight, we're going to see, all right, as I go down, we'll all, we'll see in here, uh, there's my, my, uh, my city name right here. Then again, this, this looks and feels more like a CRM where I can see my list of data and my forms of data. Inside the data, I can also go through and visualize this data in a, in a Power BI report. I can export to Excel with one click. I can even open this up in Excel online where I can make data changes. And when I hit save down below, it will push that data into the Dataverse. So this is a super easy way of, of knocking this data out. As you can see, this is just an Excel interface. You also have the full Excel interface as well, where you can import, export to Excel. We can also do things like mail merges here and all those kind of things run reports. We can see charts, all sorts of good stuff we can do. So the interface, this interface really, really rocks from a back office perspective. This is the challenge though, is all these buttons you're seeing here, all this functionality is super overwhelming for some users. So you want to have your user base that is, that, that it's okay having the blinders off. Okay, not having the training wheels on and they're handheld, that, that these buttons would not intimidate them in this case. So if you have a user base that can do that, then this is the answer for them. Here, you're going to see the same information you saw before, where I can go to my details. We can see uh, my insurance information. I go to my family history. I'm not even sure what medicine I put in here. Let me get off, off the piece, off the, uh, the video here. So we can see that I have my, uh, my, my allergies here, and then I also have whatever medication I put in the portal there as well. Additionally, if I go back to the details tab, we can go inside of here and we can see the insurance card, for example. And then lastly, we can go through an, from an ad hoc perspective, we can even do things like uh, look at patient visits. 
So if I were to go over to uh, Related and Visits, all right, well, we've got so much stuff here. I'll go this way instead, Patient Visits. All right, and, I, and ultimately, the challenge I had here, well, take a second here, is I'm in the wrong form. If I go to the, the doctor form here versus the patient form, then I can see there's the history of the patient and the visits they went to right here. Even from this angle right here, I can go through and export this data to Excel, and I can look into a patient visit. Again, this was just built in an hour or two, so it's not really uh, that complete. But here is a cool part. What we can do here is we can actually go through, and while I'm talking to the patient, I can add notes, I can add charts, I can also go through and add follow-up, phone calls to remind myself a little bit later to call this patient about X, Y, and Z. And then I can see the details of that patient right here. Again, fake data. Uh, we have all that inside here as well. So really, really easy to build these. I built this with zero code. This is what you're seeing right here at least. The model driven required a little bit of code. Uh, no, no, the canvas required a little bit of code. It was PowerFX code. And then lastly, the portal, zero code, but I could have done code for things like showing and hiding fields. So those are the application types. And hopefully this clarifies when do I use each of these. Again, just to kind of recap this one more time. And we cover this in our hackathons and all of our training at Pragmatic Works. And if you want to brainstorm, we also have something called virtual mentoring. We can brainstorm with your app together and get you past the hump as well. You can find us at pragmaticworks.com. And just to recap that one more time, what you can do if you have users that need blinders on, that need limited options, Canvas is the answer for you. If you want more sophisticated users, technically, that, that want to go and wander around, then Model Driven makes sense. And if you have external users, then the portal makes sense, the Power Page makes sense. So those are your three options. Uh, a variant of that is Power Apps for Teams, which is the free option of the Canvas, uh, as long as you're staying in Data First for Teams or SharePoint and those kind of options. All right, this is part of our training we do every day at Pragmatic Works. Thank you so much for watching this, and please visit us at pragmaticworks.com and subscribe if you want to find future videos like this. We're making them all the time. Thanks so much, and let me know if there's anything I missed in the chat window down below. Let me know if there's your thoughts on the four style of apps and how you kind of delineate those. Thanks so much.